that better? Can you hear us? Mm -hmm. well, I can you hear us now? Okay. I saw the window was down. I thought that was my event. Okay, you guys go ahead and start work here and then we'll see what happens. Let me do it for you. Yeah. Get these. I'm used to these. I'm not supposed to write anymore. <laughs> okay, I have a lot of work. Okay. Yeah, so oh, introduce thanks. yourself. Thanks for having us tonight. I'm Tori Helwig. I'm new to the Loyal County Planning Commission. Um, the RPC is working with the State Department of Buildings and General Services on this MERC program. And Elisa came um, earlier this spring and got approval from you guys to apply for money to do a mailing under the program um, as part of the community engagement outreach for weatherization. Um, another part of the program is to apply to get free building energy resilience assessments for municipally owned buildings. And BGS is now accepting applications for that. And so we're here tonight to get your approval to submit an application on behalf of the town. Um, there's a few different buildings that um, Elisa and Ron and folks have gathered um, that would be a good candidate for the program. Um, we have five and we're looking for your approval to um, submit an application to have up to five buildings assessed. And we're just looking for your input on a prioritization of which buildings you might want assessed the most and on a scale of one to five, you know, what are most important to have energy resilience assessments about. Um, and yeah. So the buildings would be this this building, yeah, uh, the yeah. library, the town garage, Guion Hall, and um the Hyde Park Fire Department. The not, not the north end, but we can only get five. So, the no, yep. this, this okay. one, yeah, this is the one that you're talking about the addition on, right? Yeah, well, what are the both doing? talking about? Getting, what? They're both, oh, they're both okay. Look, I mean, or, or if you don't like that list and you want both fire departments and you get rid of one of the other ones, that's okay, but it's a it, it's just the list that we came up with, and we're talking about. Initially, it's, it's it's an energy assessment, okay. and it looks at the energy use of of, the, of each of the buildings, um, and um, there's recommendations for how to improve it. There's what we call level one and level two assessments, so you have to decide which buildings get which. And uh, level one is more of a cursory, um, quick, quick version and level two is more in depth. So this building in the library, which are already have had work done on them, would qualify more for the level two of, and possibly the fire department. Um, whereas Guion is so obviously level one because there's no insulation, you know, like I could almost do that one. But you understand like um so we we would decide which ones of those. I guess it's a matter of um what we're looking for, not only approval to go ahead with grant, which you need to do before we could apply for that, but helping us to do the prioritizing. Because I, you know, I'm not particular opinion about it. Yeah. I mean, I think if you're Al, you would like Guion, <laughs> but if you're Amy, you might want library. So like, I don't really know what the needs are um, or, or how we would decide that. And then once the energy assessments are completed, can you, yeah, explain that part of the program. Um, so once you have an assessment, you can then apply for up to half a million dollars in implementation funding to implement the recommendations from the report that the BGS contractors provide. So that's, you have to do the energy assessment in order to be able to apply for the half a million dollars. But it's nice money. I mean, it, it's a grant or it's a loan? It's a grant. Okay. Um, so is that per building or no total? uh maximum amount per municipality gotcha okay. and not so every you use it not every municipality would get that sure um but you know if you've got a reasonable project you have a pretty good um there's a fair amount of money in there you have a pretty good chance i think it's also first come first serve so that's why we wanted to get on the thing uh, today <laughs> 
Any is this how we take care of the garage? Any local knowledge about needs, you know? So when we initially started this discussion, we had backtracked two or three years ago where the town select board approved uh, energy. H, what's that? It wasn't energy at that time. It was an HVAC <laughs> assessment of three buildings, a library, a garage, and this office. Prior to that, and during COVID, we were looking at occupancy issues to rank priority, which this office and the library, and the other ones are relatively open air or controlled or low volume people. So the fire station, the guy on hall, and the town garage. On the flip side of that, we also know that HVAC air control is probably the most uh, severe as far as a risk to employees at the highway garage. So you have those kind of have those three things kind of floating around with no airflow here, very poor control over uh, heating and cooling, hot zones, hot, cold zones, stale air when it gets humid, that kind of stuff. And the library, which seems to be a little bit better off, they're, they're probably one of the better control, but Amy's yeah. also said airflow is a problem. We need to do HVAC. And then we added energy as a potential combined project. So there are those two components. So the priority before was HVAC, employee health, energies coming in sort of under the ARPA, you know, uh, grant money that all the agencies are sending to all the towns if you want to pick your project. So it's really a, com it's a combination of those things. Not Anytime just they button up a house like that or a building, they're, they're always going to be HVAC. Anyway. Yeah. So, so, those the, so we wanted to add the new funding stream to what was an ARPA town ARPA fund before to do this. Assessment. That would play well, I think, with them. I think they might appreciate it. Yeah. So, you know, if they, let's say they, oh, you guys have $700,000 of work. Sorry, we can only do 500. And the board says, great, we'll have our 200 from ARPA and we can do all the buildings and everybody's happy. Probably won't happen like that, but I think, <laughs> you know, if they are 250, then you're going to have to work down your priority list. So I don't know what your, if your priority is health and safety current, it's sort of leaning towards the highway garage. If it's empl employees and customers, it's town office and library. <laughs> and, and then I put the fire station and the and guy in the valley. Yeah, yeah, at the other end of the. So, so who ends up controlling the grant for us? Like we just, we, we vote for this, at least takes us over and we Should just ask for a prioritized. With Tori, yeah, with Tori, they'll do the paperwork and then be back to you with more questions or more yeah, answer? You would be um, appointing me as the point of contact. Okay. Um, and then, you know, each of the different projects might have different people involved, but they want one person that they know they can talk to. Yep. Yeah. On the way. So happy you said yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd be here, you know, it would be more expensive since I'm free and Ron. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Um, do you think the municipal energy resilience program would would um what are what our chances? I mean it's energy, like do you have any recommendations on um well they're prioritizing assessments and funding for high energy burden towns from a 2019 Efficiency Vermont Report, and Hyde Park is classified as a high energy burden town. So your chances of getting an assessment and likely implementation funding are good. Um, the one thing I'll say is town garage work can be hard to fund with other funding sources. Um, so a lot of other municipalities around the county and the state are leveraging it to get an assessment and potential funding for the garage. Um, but other than that, you know, people using the space and it directly impacting people's experience in the building is good too. So, oh, you're saying it, it, it's a difficult thing to fund the garage, so this is a good source for it. There's more resources for those libraries, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. municipal offices, you know, those kind of things. And it really is. Um, I don't want to for I mean, the HVAC HVAC is part of it, but you know, energy is the key here, you know, with the whole. That's why you're in charge. Uh, We're going to be charge. committed. <laughs> but um, anyone familiar with that building? No? The time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's pretty it's right behind you. Tori, does the village signs here from the village uh, general manager, uh, they have access to 500? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So just clarify in case anybody's wondering. And but is oh, it a town okay. building or is it a village building? Village building. Yeah, building. Okay. So they whose building is it? No, the list is a town, but he has village. We have our own list. Oh yeah. no, but who owns the building? <laughs> Well, the village, oh, we have five buildings in the village. We're looking at using Merck for two of them. And we have a list that we talked about earlier. The time. Is this a different building? I'm sorry. Well, yeah, it's different, different, than, different than our farm. We're, we're not including this building. It's in town. No, no, I'm talking yeah. about the town garage. No, no it's no. a different building than what he's applying for. Yeah. He, okay. They're applying for so okay. you can got, you have the ability to get five two for the village. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, so just right. making sure everybody knew. Let's see, I was, I was confused. I'm like, wait. We you basically have ten, ten buildings, ten town, you know, five and five. Right. Million dollar possibility. Sorry, I'm really ignorant here, but what building is this? Is it across from the post office? Yes. Okay. So the, okay. the village garage is across the post office. Is that the one we're talking about being our number one project? No, we're not talking about those. He mentioned yeah. he's doing two village buildings. What yeah. was right. behind you up there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hi there. <laughs> Sorry. I, I've never been up there. <laughs> Most people laugh. Okay. Like they're trying to get sand for their driveway. Right. All right. Yes. So people work in the building. Oh, yeah. Okay. Got it. Thank you. But the building you just mentioned is one of the ones that we're looking at. Right. Uh, for, the the for, the, for the building. Yeah. yeah. All right. We should just be all together. I mean, I make um, I, I can't make motions, but somebody could make a motion to um go ahead with um Right, applying for the grant, applying for the grant. and contact. making me the point of contact. Okay. And then can we decide the priority? Because I don't want to be the one that does that. Sure. I'll make the motion for at least to apply for the grant. And okay. I'll also make the motion for at least to head this. Be the point of contact. Point of contact for the. And work for with LCPC. Yeah. So what buildings do you want to well, go to? Second. second. Okay. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody say any? Oh, you got the big prize for the night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, we can work for free and get us money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Before we prioritize the building, can we get the assessment at it? Um, that's what we're applying for, yeah. the assessments. Oh, okay. We get the money for the assessments, but, but we got to decide it. which ones they have. Well, this assessment. isn't the 500000 that we're going for. We get, do we do the assessments, and then we yeah. decide which one we want to get, yeah. or how we're going to... Yeah. Based on what we get from it. Yeah, but level one and level two are the choices, too. Um, so on the grant, you say, I want our town office to be a level two inspection. That's how we do... And so yeah. on and so on. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we need to decide for you. Okay. Any recommendations? I would put the garage right in there because there is money. Again, it's a rare opportunity to get dollars for the garage. And we know. <laughs> we know that we the garage. Are others, what would you think, level one or two, Tori? Um, I say level two. Yeah, it's a more in depth yeah. look at the building. And yeah. No, that's definitely okay. I mean, so the number one priority would be the garage, the garage. town garage <laughs> up on the hill uh for a level two energy assessment. Yeah. Okay, we have four more if we get to, if you want. Uh next. Number two. Well then I think what I do is I do this building. Yeah, the town office because yeah, town office, and then I do the library. And the, I, I don't think we can do level two on all of them, can we? Oh, you can. Okay. Okay. So I mean, they kind of should we? Yeah. They kind of warrant it because they're already insulated, and you know, it's it's not like the, the key. You know what I mean? It's not so obvious what needs to happen. Well, it's more of a level two. So level two. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to see the fire department before the library, which. What's up with the fire department? I mean, is it warm in there? Is it? Heated by oil. Well, it's a, that's our new emergency shelter. That's what right. it's, it's open to people. It's it's a it's the go to. Okay. It's oil. It's, it's oil. oil. That's another good one. Is the library well? Anyone the library has mixed. Mixed. They have oil. They, they have heat pumps already. 
Should we do municipal building two or uh, or fire department two? I think we can do all of them. Yeah, we'll do town office fire department library. That's right. Yeah. I, 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 Is that what you're saying? I think yeah. so. Okay. And then he on level one. How about that? Yeah. And the others level two. Okay. I'm good uh, at that. Good. Is that too many? No. Okay. Because we can do the five. Yeah, so we can do five. You can ask for five. They might not be able to assess all the buildings. So the one that you have higher up the list or more like that's why we have to go. Yeah. So we did town town for our town office fire department library. Okay. Okay. Thank you. The, li the library has a source of income too. <laughs> yeah. Do you have that down? I just see. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That's all we needed. Yep. I see. You guys understand. At least they can take it up. Yeah. Yeah. See you soon. Your storm update. We are getting to be the other side of that event. We have a damage assessment of 103,000 for the roads. We have no building damage. We have very little or no individual damage, although the individual assistance stuff we don't see directly. People can call the state directly for that if they had high water in their backyard or we had one call for basement water last week. We haven't had anything to overcome you know, resources that we could do ourselves. So the state hasn't been calling. Uh, we will be filing the uh, public assistance grant forms and all that business uh, to try to get back some of the 103. Mark and I are continuing to meet with engineering folks and the state water resources people at a couple sites that might uh, elevate to a mitigation type project like uh, Brook and Centerville are mitigation from 2019 but we haven't gotten that far yet. Uh, with all these events, uh, and Mark can speak to this too, uh, it's not the same as it used to be, so to speak. So things that we thought we had fixed failed again. Things that we never saw flooded, flooded again, you know, twice or three times or whatever. Uh, generally speaking, a lot of the roads did hold, hold up in all we had uh, 10, sites that we've been looking at compared to 41 from 2019. So it feels more, feels a little better to me anyway, from the paperwork side to get a short list, which is good. Mm -hmm. um, but Mark can tell you about sizing, which is, it's almost like a best guess. It's almost like a best guess when you're looking at stormwater these days because the storms are so intense that you actually cannot accommodate some of the storms, no matter how big the structure is. It'll jump, it'll turn, it will go different. But anyway, you can give some insight into it. That's pretty much it. Sizing, we used to do an 18, that'd be a three footer, so you can eat. One of the biggest things is the trees and everything it comes down and blows some yeah. of this stuff. And we had that problem in the Halloween storm, you know, North High Park Road. It was all the debris yeah. from so, up in the woods down the stream. And, that's the thing you want to think of when we do Wickham Island and do Garfield. That's one of the biggest things you want to think of when any bridges are are being talked about. Yeah, a lot of we discovered a lot of well, because of trees. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of times we, we treat the water flow, but not the well, the banks are washed up. Yeah. So taking the trees. All the banks, well, the north woke up, look at that. Johnson has the same thing, whole hundreds of feet of bank that were established with trees right down the ledge. Oh. And of course, all those trees go to the next guy. Yeah. You know? And then the river jumps up and goes around things that it never went around before. And it's just, it's such a wild card. So yeah. just go over to uh, the bypass and look down over the bridge. Look how much I filled this screen. Yeah. We, we yeah. pulled a lot of trees uh, Monday night. That would well. That's what I'm saying. All the trees. That's what I'm saying is. Get the water to go back. When we do these bridges or do, do these jobs, that's what you really I think, think they're designed for we when we talked about the design, it was like Q25 yeah. or Q50 right. you were talking, where we just received two Q100s in the last 10 years. So what does that mean? A hundred year event. So oh, okay, that's what I thought it meant. Yeah. So so 
we've been designing them for the 50 year flood event, right and we received two 100 year flood events in the last years yeah it's hard to if we're looking at a bridge designed for a 50 year flood event and we're seeing two 100s we've got to start looking at but getting out of that a few 100 right and next step up so the road damage is that from because i know we were calling like we had the storm before the actual flood right when you put that road before. The Friday, so that's the total for all of it, which is 103. Yeah, we've got we've got miscellaneous, uh, not in that number. So mm -hmm. you know, the removing logs from the shore, it, we're not adding up the two hours of that time. Sure, you have sure. $3,800 is the per site minimum number. So if you don't meet that, then you have to look if you had consistent damage along the road area to get over that 30 by adding a bunch of different sites. Mm -hmm. we, had, we had, and we didn't have that. We had these repeat sites of Centerville and right. Brook Road, yeah. Brook Road four times, you know. So you yeah. have this cumulative thing that creates a problem. Those new, the, the work that's approved would pass all that stuff. So Mark's workload would have gone down to two or three roads if those two sites were fixed. So that's where we're trying to get it. You know, if we have these high repeat zones, to, and we did this on Diggins Road today with Watershed Consulting, mm -hmm. how do we not keep going here? Because yeah. the roads, that's a class four road, are, were not designed to take this kind of water. And now people are living out there and they need to get there with their fire trucks. And all of a sudden these go paths basically or old river beds are the main road and the water wants to go down the road. And you can't necessarily pick it up and move it anywhere. So those, that's the challenge of Mark is, you know, it's, it's it may be a $200,000 fix to Diggins, for example. Yeah. And who's going to pay for that on a class four when there's no grant money? Right. Maybe the taxpayers and the three people past the fire pond. Right. <laughs> you know, see, so you, you end up with these huge costs on Brook Road, repetitive loss. You know, we could go into $400,000 on a, on a dirt road that serves a few people at each end, but it's, you know, four miles long. Right. That's an expensive road. High hazard roads are going. I think those are going to become a big issue for select boards. Just you're not going to go back and put these three hundred, four hundred thousand dollar culverts everywhere. Class four road, you don't even have to plow it. Don't have to. You can move that fire pond down the hill a little bit and get on right. that road. I mean, those are decisions that are not based on the historical. Like with Dave Gagne, just to use his name for fun, uh, he would say, we've always gone there, we should keep going there. But these kind of costs are pushing that discussion to be, we may not be able to keep doing those things. I remember what, I, what my age was at that point. <laughs> Can't, we gotta get, oh, Matt's, Matt's even said it, you know, how, how far do we send all the public resources of our highway crew to a single house at the end of a half mile road? How long do we keep doing that kind of thing? Yeah. Those are real questions that so far have been accommodated by Mother Nature being not so bad. Really, I mean, if you go up there, oh, we only have to grade that path once a year. It's fine. It's not costing you much for all my taxes. Well, that formula is switching around. Yeah. So I'm actually thinking of like a map that says high hazard, high cost road. Yeah. So at least you can have the discussion from the experience that Mark has where the resolution to those. Right. is not regrading it differently or tipping the water to the left or right. Yeah. It's restructuring the road, raising the road, terminating a road. And the more you develop it, the more you cut it off. Of there. The more you can't get out, you know, the more the houses that go in on some of these roads that you've haphazardly approved because there's all of a sudden a four that's a decent road, then more people build and then you can't get out of those things as easily, you know? So anyway, I'd, that's a side discussion, but we're, we're struggling with that kind of, what, what do you do? What do you do as a board? Yeah. At this point, well, and what's happening with the Centerville Road and Brook Road right now? Centerville Brook Road, we, Mark and I, and the engineer and Robert from the village met with DeRoche, Ron, Ron DeRoche this morning. Um, I think the consensus was to take a risk of FEMA. <laughs> we don't have FEMA approval for the other 400. That we've asked for since the middle of May. But FEMA here has agreed to expedite that. FEMA, FEMA, as far as I know, all the FEMA message has gotten, they're trying to get this expedited yes. with the money people in, right. they call it the CRC, the, the Consolidated Resource Center for FEMA. 
they control the money. So they have to go through their own analysis of what the FEMA project review people did. And after we did our own analysis of what the repair work is supposed to be. So all that stuff is now pending. There's nothing, nothing waiting from anybody except, yes, we've approved your <coughs> cost change request. That's what we're waiting for. We're running against the calendar and the concern of the village and the concern of the residents and the fire department access and a whole bunch of things about why that's a bad location to not have a through road. Temporary measures. I was talking to Jeff Beatty today who called, what's going on with Centerville? Why can't you just turn to one lane? Well, if you go to the road and see, yeah. see that the pipe is broken in the middle, creating erosion, we don't want to send people on a of at risk one lane road. <laughs> it's it's you know, one little here. How many could I go up there to the house? You were no, you weren't with me because I went up there the other night and you were just standing there and it wasn't even raining. And it was still falling off. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, wow. it's still falling. It was this morning too, but I'm not. Oh, you want to put traffic over that? No. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't know what the hole is or anything. Yeah, you don't know. Nothing think drops. Well, I think the last select board meeting, we agreed that we're going ahead. You know. Yeah. So and and the got the only right right and, and well when when Mark and I when we were there with SEMA and I told them I said we can't and and they were in complete agreement with the set line they've gone we will expedite this for you we get the money and and what you're looking at the difference in the cost it's not like it's unique to us okay it's not as though every place is you know based These on days. Trump's wife, right? you know and they saw it very clearly as a health safety and oh then you throw in they said and oh by the way this is the water supply in the village they're like oh <laughs> as in, you know we have to we can't do a temporary because that's not going to be safe and I, it was clear they understood that very clearly so i'm comfortable when maybe we we checked with our lawyers and you know oh, if you go ahead and then there's well if you can get pretty you know picky and if we went ahead and bought the culverts and stuff well the contractor find the culverts <laughs> you know the contractor's doing it so i'm i'm i am perfectly comfortable going ahead and maybe i don't literally sign the contract until we hear from from fema but you know we got to go ahead and do it and we need to do it now i thought we already agreed to that well, well the, con yeah, the contract went to the contract or who has a couple edits oh, so we yeah. notify yeah. david yeah. Rue that there's some edits if we can get through the edits quickly you know like tomorrow and the board said you know, mm -hmm. the decision to, to go under the contract that's not signed is is a problem for the contractor. He he basically said this morning that he doesn't want to do anything unless the town is going to commit to paying it. Um, and I don't think we have a choice to a certain degree whether FEMA comes through yeah, or yeah, doesn't. Yeah, right. That culvert's got to be replaced. Yeah. And Jeff Beatty mentioned that today. Am I missing something? But if I'm a taxpayer and have to pay an extra hundred fifty thousand, whatever the add-on that we're waiting for is. So, then I might have to pay that to get that road open. It's a high priority thing. So he was looking at it for, purely from a taxpayer, you know, we need to do it anyway perspective. It'd be nice if we had 97% funding. Right. But if we don't, we still have to do the work. Right. But I think we, we so, all agree with that at the last meeting. So the, the funding condition and the contract is contingent on funding. So that's one thing you'd have, we'd have to remove. Sure. The other contingency was removing the uh, deadline for completion because it's going to be a moving target because of the time of year. And that, I think, can be can be done if it's out of the contractor's control. I think there's wording that David probably could come up where if it's our problem, the supplier's problem, then the contract can be extended. But we don't want to say the contractor has total freedom on that if we're doing everything we can do to expedite it, too. So there's a little give and take on that one issue, what the actual completion date is. But and then we might want to automatically set aside Brook Road because right now both both culverts are supposed to be replaced by October 1st. That's what's in the draft contract, because that lines up with your permits. After we go past October 1st, we have to start amending permit deadlines and getting extensions there with the state of Vermont and FEMA and our, the Army Corps, because everybody's tied into this one project being done in October. So that's not impossible stuff, but it's something that happens if we miss um, those permit deadlines. So if you were to say, we're comfortable as a board to authorize uh, Susan to work with the town attorney to deal with the contract amendments, 
within the scope of what I just mentioned. And that's it. That's just a way of saying the legal people have to look at it. Um, then you're willing to take the risk of that site only because Brook Road will have more time, you know, if we agree to extend that to 24 if needed. And then Centerville, we have to do this winter. We're willing to take that chance of that additional FEMA money not coming in because of the high priority village needs, plowing needs. I mean, there's there's yeah, there's a dozen reasons why we need to get that done before winter, I guess is the right. summary. And Ron is okay with he wants to he'll have something he here like start tomorrow. Oh, he, okay. he basically said he's ready to go now. Okay. You know, he well, he'll get to go. Yeah, yeah. Right. he'll have I'm lame. <laughs> he'll start working with the village on water main questions. He'll start rubbing out the site. People will see action and some of the phone calls will go down that something's actually started. That's not too bad right now, but I know people are talking about why is that still closed? All the other roads seem to be opening. It's like, well, you thought I should see something happening and that issue goes away. It won't be open, obviously, for three months or whatever this contract takes. Right. But yeah, well, I was wondering if they could do a one lane thing. Yeah. They're in the project. At some point during construction, they might get to that point, but I don't know if I'd add that. I'd, I'd say when it's done, it's done, the road's open. I think yeah. that's probably easiest for the contractor. A little bit quicker. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, easiest for the contractor. And that way, he, and we're up against this. If you might want to do that if it was a seven month all summer project. Sure. Yeah. But if we're looking at a three or four month project to get it done, I think the easier it is for the contractor, the better. I think it's more the, the procurement of the contact fight. But it's four to six weeks for that. Yeah, I mean, okay, right, yeah. that that's what the contact is with um, there's the, the supplier of that yeah. Um he wants to order that like tomorrow. Well, yeah. Could, yeah, I think I think it's a bigger deal than what people understand right now. So um, there's a lot more of them coming through. Sure. Uh, Especially in the whole northeast. Six or eight. And we all we have the to call them to suddenly gone up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. A little bit. There is a supply of our own project. So. So anyway, I think that's I, I don't I don't see any option of not going forward really without running into all more problems. Trip and we're not the only state the elevator. No. Okay, so we just didn't know. I was directing you to work with the town attorney in order and approve the contract as soon as possible or something like that. Yeah. But I I I I guess I you didn't have a vote. No, no, you didn't have a vote on a, you have an amended contract now, which wasn't part of the oh, okay. Okay. You had approval to sign the contract. He's asking to amend it. So now we just need to oh, okay. add that little work with the town attorney to make this happen as soon as possible kind of language to get a contract to Deroche Ro De and get him moving. With the extent we and we're splitting up Brook Road, but it wasn't part of last. Oh, okay. We were trying to get everything done by October, yeah. but now there's a few changes that we talked about that need to be okayed by you, I guess, mm -hmm. tonight. And then Susan can formalize it and finish it with David Rue. Okay. Thank you. Slightly different project than okay. last week. So I guess we need a motion to authorize me to work with the attorney and contractor to get the contract signed for the center field. So we'll road back it. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Chris Purnell is busy. Our stream alterations permit for your other sites. He just texted and said he's got to move to August 2nd. So I'll forward you his text for your calendar. He was going to come out on Thursday to start reviewing Mark's schedule. Sure. Uh, so uh, he's running out of time. He's running out of time too. On his day, but August second isn't that far away, actually. Well, next week. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Tuesday. Yeah. It's not that far away. Mark. Right. Uh, Eleven a.m. And he always meets me here at the office first. So August second is Wednesday. Wednesday, August second at eleven a.m. Just for my own knowledge, before we move off of this one, we voted on the whole GPS tracker for all your with the, everything that went down. Did we use that for a tool? I can't get into it. Yeah. Oh. 
No, it's a lot of money. I can't go back to see. It was supposed to come in handy, and I think we're coming up on our one year. I think our revo was one of those things where we go for one year. So, yeah, it'll be a good education tool for us. Yeah, we got a one year pilot project, and there's a, I think, in summary, I think there's enough technical technical issues with communicating the vehicles. Yeah. And Mark had some issues, which I still don't understand about access. It's just a password access, but we have an internet access problems at the garage, which I think we are solving or have solved. Um, the highway crew in total doesn't access the information individually. So it's not like a whole team that was really Mark. And sometimes I would jump on to see if things were working and I'd see all the trucks parked at the town garage. Mm -hmm. And I'd see like the speed of vehicles that day that Mr. Griggs was yeah, but it's uh, in the mud. Um, and it does do reports, like you can get some reports. But one of the two of the trucks had uh, with sensor problems or part yeah, of the pieces. Well, that's some pieces still haven't come in for some. I mean, we installed them, we're, we're still waiting for them. Uh, can't do a replay on the grader or the excavator or handle it. You can't go back to see. So, like when you're asking, can you go back now? Can't see nothing. Right. Less, less so, I'm saying when our one year comes up, are we seeing the value out of what we spent? Uh, I don't think so. I think Mark had a almost a better idea, which okay. Susan and Mark have talked about, which is how do you collect data the best way when you don't have the best right. in the field technology. Right. So I think there's other ways to do it, but you still have to develop those other ways. Right. I mean, this was like 100% of the reason why we really pushed for that. So I think this, I just, when it comes up, it's the no need to be Yeah, I don't need to right. I think so. We still have to come up with a plan, though, because yeah. Mark's, Mark did a little test this storm. And I think if we develop his idea better with having somebody that's sort of semi-trained to sit with him, that's better. You get more detail that's useful than what that machine could do anyway. Yeah. This was ready really fast. Yeah, Mark gave me it's all good. this. Yeah. Mark, Mark gave me his stuff. And then the next step is to look at invoices and update that list. So right. I think right. So we're, I think we're, if, if FEMA is accommodating, we haven't had the applicants meeting yet for anybody because it's, the event is ending now, or I don't know, they, they haven't had an end date. When the end date happens, okay. FEMA does the applicant meeting to bring all the towns together to go over all the gory paperwork. Mm -hmm. That information, um, if FEMA uh, the liaison, we have a project manager that will come. If that person is really helpful, I think reimbursement will come pretty quick because this event was much more controlled. So it'll be it'll be better than last time, I think, just simply by the scope of the work. And Mark's able to give me really good data, so it's very easily transmitted to FEMA. We haven't identified the mitigation projects. Those are the ones that get booted out into like a two or three year cycle. But all the initial damage assessments, I, I'm hoping to get those back before September, maybe, if, if we can manage that. So most of that money will come back from those initial repairs. And then Mark and I and Rob Moore and Chris Brunel and Andrew Cerizo from Watershed will talk about those mitigation things. Some eligible under the grant, potential under the FEMA event, some part of your regular workload, some maybe get switched to the local roads grant program. So we're tri triaging those things. So on that list is a list, but then you have a new list that talks about where we go from there. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for Mark? Or... Somebody, somebody obviously in that when that re up, somebody will cancel that. I would assume. Yeah. Well, we'll the, cancel it right away. That's, that's the consensus that I'm hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll go on votes. It's haunted me for like nine months. Yeah. I voted yes for it, and then I was like, yeah. I know I voted. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, that's, that's the reason why it makes sense to try something. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. You do know, it for a year ago. Well, we're not doing that again. Or it could have been brilliant. Wow, that was a great idea. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Here>. <laughs> okay. We're good. <laughs> Maybe you want to tell us more? Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh, okay. Not that I really want to tell you. We have to tell you. Uh oh. Uh, this thing was on my head. You guys have it out here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll <I'm gonna figure laughs> it out. Oh, yeah. Okay. We have to turn it.
I think it's the second page on the freight bag. Uh, the single axle truck. No, I wrote it on the front. Yeah. Yeah. So I tried getting prices last year, and we couldn't get a price because they didn't know what the engines, engine emissions were going to cost to design. So I haven't now got a price till recently, and this is going off last year's state contract. The new one's coming out after July, which they think is not going to be as good as this one, which I'm seeing was, you know, the Ford or whoever. I think, you know, there's too much demand and they're not giving out the deals they used to go down support the And the tandem is about little, going to be a little over $20,000 a month for tandem. Not a problem, get one. Because that's what they're doing right here. They're forcing you to this price to buy a six wheel truck. And that's why the price was so hot. $20,000 more per tandem. I know, that seems. This, this is a six wheel truck. Yeah, yeah I know it. Yeah, that's 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 unheard of, mm -hmm. and that's a state contract. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Then I have another problem. I don't know if it's going to fit in my bag. But twenty grand. Well, you know, it's going to be very tight. You're going to be twenty grand more. I think, but. For yeah, a little over 20, I think. Talking to rough figures, I think. But did you get this? Is a state contract. Did you get any prices on a freight liner? Or, or no, because I was waiting for pricing to come back, and none of them. I, I would pricing. like. I would like to know what a price of a freight liner and painting star is or something. Okay, so this right here can be good to the end of the uh, 30th, I think. Yeah, well, they're pushing you again. Usual, it's just the uh, yeah. I'm not biting that. I, I just think that's way too high for a goddamn six wheel dump. Oh, that's crazy. If I especially the state contract, I don't understand that. There's something, um, uh, net was 180, I think. But do you know you get for trade data? Probably not. No, I can't tell you the trade because it'd be you know, this is just getting it so you they'll build it next year, finding out what and they, they used to tell you your, on your on your. When you bought a truck or before you bought a truck, they tell you what you traded. Yeah, well, we used to go out in the spring and have to fall. Now you get to go the following year, so they can't tell you because they have no idea what the condition that truck's going to be in. And how many hours you be on it? In you're another year. Or a year and a half. You know, you're talking a year and a half, two years. Yeah. You know, that's just the truck you built, then the body's going to be put on. So it's so you're you're talking a year and a half. We used, to, but we, used to, we used to build it out in the spring and they'd give you a pretty close idea for the trade in. But that, even with Mike's truck, we couldn't get a trade in. They wouldn't go to the trade about that one. So, past, this past January, this 2023 tandem was 233. 230. 233. Yeah. I think and that was two years ago. January 23. No, no we, we ordered two, at least 18 months prior to that. Yeah, right. that was the price then. Yeah. So you got that's what we paid, but that was the price then. Yeah. That's almost $100,000. You got to love emissions. Yeah, the, yeah, the emission of deer to your four. Yeah. Uh, and the tandem, when you did the black top, would be one low salt. That's it. With your six wheel down, you have to do two two loads, right? Uh, depends on what the weather is. It depends on what I'm putting out down for a mile. But depends on the road conditioner, how much weight do I need on to get it back up over dry fields. So there's a lot of variables. It's not like you just go out and back empty. Some of these hills, you're going to go with a little bit of weight on. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so depends. Depends on the storm, I guess. So yes, someone yes, you probably do the whole route. Some you would have to come back just to get the weight. Yeah, I, I I just think a six wheel dump for that price is way outrageous. Twenty grand more, I'd rather go with a tandem. At least with a tandem, you can haul your animal with it. You can haul your sand with. You know, six wheel dump, you just well leave it in the garage, haul sand and gravel and stuff. 
but can I believe the price? Is there a reason that we have a smaller one versus? Easier to get around the village. Okay. Easier to be a backup. Some happen to a dodge. Go down these little roads. That's kind of where it is. Can you go down on the back hill? Probably because of pain. So not a lot of reasons. I mean, some reasons. But we, you know, we can plow the pickup with just an ice storm. It was. It used down, to be cheaper. Be, they used to be cheaper. Yeah. So and that's the, okay. I bet you that was when they when we bought that truck. What was it? Not? Can you see that? And they're doing the same thing with the. But it was a hundred grand. We bought. In fact, they're doing the same thing with the three hundred and fifty truck. Yeah. Versus a pipe. Wait, did everyone into that? What, 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 I mean, you know, they don't want to push the three hundred and fifty to two hundred and fifty no more. So the price of them gone up, and your five hundred and fifties are pretty pretty reasonable. And they're doing the same thing here. I can see. And this one's in our can we find it? Can we find it 300,000 or can we find it 320,000? <laughs> they're both expensive, a lot of money. Are they going to come down? Who oh, no. knows? I don't. This was in our plan, too. Right? We, knew this, we knew this yeah, was coming. We started talking. Well, yeah, well we're just going to get prices. One one eighty five. Two thousand fifteen. Okay. That was the international seven six hundred. Cap chest. Yep. Everest Everest body, right? <laughs> How about a fleet of F three fifties, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> If you and can't get the roads, you close the roads, Mark. One of the, one of the towns <laughs> did go that way, St. Albans. St. Albans, because they had to do something with their guys in the parking lot. Parking lot. Yeah, one of the towns did do something. Get about it. Those things are cheap. We get a really, we get a really good price, 50000 each or something. Yeah. Set up. But <laughs> this is ridiculous. We contract all your hauling. You, you won't have any hauling capacity. <laughs> we'll let, the, let the contractors pay the price. The charge Maybe, but well, we only use, yeah. but we only have them part time because we only have jobs at that point. We don't have to carry the whole thing. There's a, there's a cost, and it's like the road question: How long do you keep roads? How long do you keep big trucks? You know, is it better to go contractor and reduce your road mileage at the same time? Then you can do something different. It's not the same. None of these evaluations are the same anymore, just because of inflation and. Climate change, if you want to call it that, but something's changed where this is just not normal. Mm -hmm. So nothing's off. I don't have a suggestion. I really don't. It's a lot of money. But we can dump a lot of money in an old truck. I'm not saying it, it won't make another two winners. I'm not saying, yeah. but then if we do that, we mess up our capital. We're messed up already. We're messed up already. That price. His number is mentioned right on the side. What else is last year? To double that appropriation line this year. Yeah. Leaf. Okay. What do you What do you guys say? What do you want to do? Like? No. Are we going to get? I mean, different prices. I think. The parallel prices. Yeah. This is right? This is the state contract. State contract, they have already gone out the bid for every truck in the United States and move on. Yeah. 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 So there's a little bit of contract. contract. Pretty much a little bit. Your this yeah. international is your little bit. Yeah. So, yeah. so as good as it gets. Well, it's not it. Okay. I just what do you think, Roland? Yeah, I know that there's a lot of them, but they're not going to get better. If, if, I was, if I was set, so I would definitely go with the tandem with the experience I got. For another 20 grand, you're not going to be able to beat it. When you want a truck on the road, you can haul your sand with it, you can haul your gravel with it. It's a lot better. You know, you got one, two places in the village. But as we talked about today, if you've got to wing the side streets, you can do it with a grader. 
Is it non triaxial? Is your single aqua non or is it non CDL? No, no. There's no benefit there. there. Ain't no benefit, no. Yeah. 26,000. Do you have an opinion on that? Or? I don't, I mean, a tandem would come in handy. It'd be easier to get around, like I said, the small streets with it, but we could get around either way. Either way. The, the pros cons. outweigh the cons in your mind, but you're, I can tell you, thank you. <laughs> another, for another 20 grand. Right, for the 10. It I makes mean, more sense. You have probably twice the hall capacity. What's that? Right. You have probably twice the hall capacity. Yeah. <laughs> Is that is this seven yards? Seven yards. Maybe where it where, where, where yeah. and forge. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think that's what they're trying to do is they're just trying to force you into it. That's why I did that. Can't believe it was six wheeled up there. I used to buy them for 60 grand. Yeah, showing your age there. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the good old days. <laughs> They're gone. <laughs> They're long gone. So the, the issues the tandem presents and we're dealing with it with our smaller building buildings, right? Uh, and that seems to be the Really downside. Like one phone call. I mean, you get that this is a state contract. I know. I feel better if I saw this. Yeah. Just, just one. We always ask yeah. more. Just one more. Just I just want to see what it would be. I mean, I, I don't know. I, mean, I would too. Yeah. Just it, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe. Can you check the state? Because yeah. it, well, because this this is the state. They know that they're going to sell five fifty of them or a hundred of them. Or maybe Pete didn't, you know, maybe Peterbilt has five of them. I don't know. Right, absolutely. Because everyone's going to this and not Yeah, I think we should go with Peterbilt. I get yeah, right. They're way greater. Right. <laughs> You're probably still talking way more than yeah, that. I get right. it. We're talking high truck. Yes, yeah. exactly. Right. Well, I, I'm still, I'm say, I'm just using that. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying yeah. I'm just saying get get a number, whatever. Yeah. And get the price on the ten or whatever. You know the the small seven fourteen. Uh, just to compare. Yeah. So it's a lot of you have the numbers in front of us. Right. Can I just send this to somebody? I think. I think you're right. Perfect. Yeah. I'll add this to the next agenda. You know, man, back. Well, the price is going to be hit. We might have to do sooner than that, right? Well, if you want that, I mean, that whatever that price is going to have, no idea. But that's gonna be. all I know is it's supposed to lock you into a get built next year, just by July 30th. <coughs> yeah. But I don't know. The state, so, if we it's can a go state back out contract, it will have it. State contract won't be done on July 30th, right? I don't I think it, it might be an ordering thing, maybe more than a pricing thing. State, sure. contract, state contract will be there in December. Well, I don't see how fast you can get some other numbers, and then we got it that we can all do a special quick check and getting on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, and we're done. I think if we need to do the class, and after you call me, hey, you know, I got to think about it. I thought about that for two and a half hours. Damn. I didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I know. I'm already getting it deeper. Than this. Just, just wait till your next fire truck for this. So that's oh, yeah. That's right. already come to us. Yeah. Right. You're right. But see what Sandy will do. The greater fire. See what Sandy will do. It would be interesting. Okay. Well, let's go. Check a couple and see what it is. And let us know. And as I say, if we need to do something, we can do it before the next select board meeting. We can just do a special meeting and get everybody on the phone and do it. Okay. We can do that. Okay. Thank you. Anything else for me? Underground tank. I think that's talking about my underground tank. <laughs> Well, so we got the pros and the cons, and it's out next year. So I know we need to just put this off in the fall and not, you know, pretend it's fine. I mean, yeah, it's fine. I think, I mean, 
Okay. Hey guys, can I interrupt for a minute? Oh yeah. Oh, oh right. Oh right, we got Adam. You wanna go down to old new business number eight in New Alley? Yeah. 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 Can we skip ahead, please? Because I have clients coming in about ten minutes. So. Come on, Come on. Hang out with us. It's all the fun. <laughs> yes, Reality. What can we help you with? Uh, so I had asked Ron if uh, the board would consider changing the um, ordinance for ACO and making it just a dog control officer instead of an animal control officer. And the reasoning behind that is I can't tell you how many calls I've gotten to go fetch loose cows, horses, <laughs> chickens <laughs> rabbits and it's like you know, i can't help you with that that's not part of my job description with the town i know it says in the ordinance that it is for domesticated animals and then it lists it off ron could be more handy with that description seeing as how he's got his computer in front of him but um you know i don't have a horse trailer <laughs> i'm not gonna go chase cows around um pretty much we deal with dogs and that's part of that ordinance it states you know we mainly deal with domesticated dogs so we should change that i think it's a good idea right yeah it requires a, <laughs> a amendment a strike version at one of your next meetings right okay at. He was probably mentioned in a few spots. It's also a good time to look at it. It's a 2018-19 ordinance, so you oh, okay. on your five-year good idea to look at stuff again for new members as well as yeah. even Keith could look at it. Oh, okay. So we could take a couple meetings just to hash that out. Okay. In the interim, uh, Allie, you could be directed by the select board to only deal with docs. In the interim, while we amend the ordinance, yeah. if that helps you respond to people? I think in a way, it it can be 50-50. I mean, because a lot of people go to the town's website to find out who the ACO is. And then they see, you know, ACO means animal control officer. So they assume it just covers all animals. You know, it's not like we're a game warden. <laughs> So we should change that to a DC. Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just thinking in the interim, the ordinance has to stay until it's amended. But if you have right. the select board's consent to continue to say, I can't help you. Right. Then at least you can say that I talked to the board about this. I really can't. Instead of you trying to make a decision on your own not to do it, I guess. is what I'm Right. So you can tell people we're looking at the ordinance again and changing it so that you just know that it deals with dogs. Perfect. I mean, that would help Keith and I a lot. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Starting about the uh, front porch form that was using lambs. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, which I don't use mm. Okay. Guess we'll just put that on the next agenda. Or the, yeah, or the next, you know, when it's ready. Probably have time to talk yeah. to you, the review yeah. with that, do that kind of stuff before okay. it gets back to you. Okay. So maybe not the next meeting, but when it's ready. Okay. That. <laughs> Are you doing the strength version? Yeah, I'll work with uh, Keith initially and then uh, make sure Allie's comments are, yeah. she has a chance to look at it too. Yeah. Okay. And then it shouldn't take that long, but I don't want to commit to the next meeting at this point, just okay. when it's ready to come back to you. Okay. Thank you, Allie. Perfect. Thank you guys. Have a great night. You too. Some of those, some of those things have all referrals too. You know, like large animals can go to Department of Ag. 
Oh, okay. sometimes it's just calling the neighbor and say, hey, your cow's out again, you know, yeah. because we know collectively who the cow's owner is, right. whereas the new person might not have any idea where the cow came from. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's just phone calling. Them. And I have horses every time the horse is out on the phone with Ray. Susan is interested. Look, I said, no, I don't need it. Not a problem. You know, it's BLTC was just learning how to play with. I don't know what he says. I saw that notice come through. Yeah, that was forwarded to Allie and Keith. Yeah. Yeah. Who wrote? Yeah. Not one of those musicians. Okay. That was a shared scanner. All right. So I haven't done official response from Johnson yet. That's on their agenda for August 7th to discuss it. Talked with Rosemary briefly today, and they should have enough money in their budget for it, but it's not her call to make. So um, but Rosemary's for it, and so is Susan, the assistant clerk over there. I talked with Kim, and we both agreed that the we made a star on it on the stack back here. But it's forty two hundred fifty dollars. But we agreed that the thirty six month lease would probably be the best option. Um, comes with a one year warranty. The one hundred fifty five fifty five a month does not include a maintenance plan. So the maintenance plan would be anywhere from eight to one hundred dollars on top of that. A month. A month. Yep. Um, so that's the least. The other option is to do an out, and then Johnson would hopefully take half of that monthly price. What was the monthly price? One fifty five. Plus up to hundred. Yeah, plus up to that. Sorry. Oh, there it is. Back one. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. I created an open to where it is on my packet. <laughs> So this yeah. monthly fee, potentially, we're going to ask them to come back. Yes. Okay. Um, Kim and I should have found potentially a BLC key grant available. Okay. Kim and I couldn't find it. Ron mentioned it, but Kim and I were concerned that if we did the grant versus the lease, that maybe the grant will. The grant may not cover the lease. Probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. That so was hard. Is a good idea because it maybe ends up not being like, yeah. you might want something different or you know when the lease is up, you trade it in, right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean it yeah. gave yeah. three different yeah. options yeah. too. Yeah. So we, we do have a few uh, different ones. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Prior discussions included an ARPA project mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. not done yet to uh improve the accessibility of documents on the website. So that was already approved by the board as a project to talk about. Okay. So we potentially have our share within the concept of that mission sure. already kind of budgeted, if you will, yeah. on the ARPA. So it wouldn't necessarily be anything if you purchase it. So I'd like to know the difference of the of a straight up purchase versus the added on interest over the term of the lease. So if you have a three-year lease, how much are you going to pay compared to buying the thing right out? They've got they've got a neighbor right here. So like 16 month lease is 102.43. So 60 times 102 is like $6,120 versus outright purchase is 4250. So it's a $1,900 difference. So but we're thinking we're in the 30. I want the 36 month. Is that what you're thinking? The 36 month, yeah. But even still, 155 55 a month. Those basic months is five thousand five hundred nine. Basically, it's six hundred. So it's fourteen hundred dollars, fourteen fifty more. And then we went on. Yeah. And this would be split two ways. So we're talking about a, like so outright purchase of forty two hundred. Split two ways would be twenty one hundred. If we do the outright purchase, which would come from a five thousand dollar upper project that's probably not going to get done. Right, so to repurpose my, that out, out budget. Yeah, yeah. my vote would be going that route because you, if you, you're talking about a lease and then you're talking about a maintenance program on top of that, which is another eighty dollars a month. <laughs> I would probably get a maintenance program if we bought it anyway. Wouldn't it? Maintenance would cost a thousand to twelve hundred a year, so go about yeah that same amount if we bought it. There is, I'm not exactly sure how it all works, 
but this 36 month FMV, that's fair market value. So they would buy the lease out at the end. Mm -hmm. So not exactly how that structure would look like, but that's kind of the in-between option. Yeah, I think when you have cash, you don't necessarily want to lease necessarily. You know? Yeah, you're always going to end up paying. The other question, which anything over a thousand dollars, you're supposed to have like three vendors quote. This is like a one vendor quote right now. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure Johnson, when they get around to it, will ask for the, what are the two other vendor prices for the same similar machine. You'll never get the exact same machine because they always change the UPC coding by one digit or something, but you can get something comparable mm -hmm. based on it. It's a really simple machine. So I think you should be able to get a quote from our to other well, that, you told us at the last meeting that you couldn't find a lot of people with COVID. I didn't right? find a lot, no. Okay. And just they've used a lot of, well, they've been to Cambridge, Fletcher, Killington, South Burlington, a lot of other places too. We could ask like national yeah. business who we have the copier with, do you do this? And that would be an answer that you get from them in an email. No, we can't. We don't quote those machines. Which is fine. But that's cool. You know, you're trying to get yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just though we know when anybody looks, you didn't just say, oh, well, this is it. And you if you find that. something on yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think those references are part of it. They come into play at some point that other people are using these people. But the, right. the initial part, you want to check off your three or more quotes. Yeah. Yeah. Aren't, aren't we kind of with like that? The uh, state is a quote, probably. You know, the, the, the computer place in Rome can found. They got bought up by national business, which is our copier people now. Pretty but, sure that we're talking about but no, well, who's running like our email programs? <clears throat> Tech group Tech has group. software, hardware. Yeah. I wonder if they're maintenance for the big link with the snow maintenance program. Oh, well. okay. Their maintenance program, I think, is, that's who ours is served. Now. We're Tech group. I think they yes, yeah, so you can ask them if you know if you're really going to be paying on the well, then they, I think that they'd be a quote to supply you with that. They, and that then, okay. they could be a reseller of parts and pieces, yeah. So, yeah. Tech group and uh. National business would be two other places to check in. Sharp here. desk. We can go through sharp desk. Yeah, sharp desk. Um, anyway, you know where I had to do it. <laughs> so, and then if you get down to the maintenance plan, <clears throat> some of the companies that we're just talking about may have to do their own maintenance plans themselves. Mm -hmm. Just like they do a maintenance plan, it might be a totally separate division that's competitive on its own. Okay, so asking about actually buying the scanners with them and also buying the scanners. Yeah, so there's two things with them, and then you try to get the two other firms to say yes, we can do it, or no, we don't do that, or here's your new number for maintenance. So, similarly, I did contact Hawkins Network and Shelburne, and they weren't available. So that's a, another one that I said now. Good to get good to get at least another price if you can, because I can't. I know it's probably limited because Vermont's a small market, especially for service, but it'd be good to have at least one other comparison price. Cool. So I'll get those. I'll bring it back to the August 8th meeting and hopefully Johnson will have something to say. Yeah. You probably won't have that stuff for Johnson on the 7th. Yeah, but if I, th I was always working there in person, so maybe Rosemary will have like a, oh yeah, they said this. So it's not in the minutes, but it'd be kind of a yeah. an idea. Yeah. A little, a little bit of a side note, but same concept. I'm starting working with CAI to update our maps online. So everything would be current for property owners. They click on the parcel and actually say who owns the property, not going to 2018. So we're, we're behind yeah. by almost two years. Yeah. <laughs> Good update. Okay. Okay. Town administrator job description discussion. What have we done, Susan? We we had a meeting or something. Yeah, I actually oh well, she she was on that. Um <clears throat> Ron is, is every week, he's track of what he decides the hours and sort of what they apply to. So he's sort of trying to get some idea of um, 
at least general category of what it's doing. Um, we all have all this yeah of the um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, not everything that had the previous in tech job description. I think so. Yeah, it could have been a couple of weeks ago. But it was just the current uh, 2016 job description. Yeah. And Susan. Susan, I met with town staff of, what's it, a week ago now? It was. Seems like it was before the storm. I can yeah, never. And they had comments about a job description, town administrator, person, uh, skill level, whatnot. Right, what they wanted to see. The staff. What they brought. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That was Steve and Justin and Krista. Kim was on the phone. Jen was there. Yeah. We just had a little circle discussion. The outcome of that plus some of the changes that you've already made are mending the job description, clarifying, taking off some jobs like Steve's jobs, uh, board clerk job, um, health officer job. Financial stuff. Yeah. And then adding in a preference for financial, prior municipal budgeting policy, those kind of things that help you guys out. So I took all the those comments and the um, some of the select board comments and the new job, two new people took them on it. The 2016 job description ended up with this strike version. So you have the original, this is the strike version. Okay. This is the next step in the process. What it's missing is a select board's input. So uh, I think highway has to have a sit down and library has to have a sit, sit down, I think is what the plan was to have everybody's input. The select board um, may not be ready to discuss about this. Maybe we finish highway and libraries and input first, so you have everybody's input. Yeah. Um, so we're just talking about process, you know, taking it relatively slow, yeah. letting as much input as we can get and be incorporated, and then at some point get ready for uh, approval of the job description for advertising. Mm -hmm. That that includes the whole funding piece for this fall's budget, obviously, which is going to be interesting. How the timing is good, but the numbers are way different than what you might be used to. Um, At this point, thinking I have a uh, thirty-two, twenty-four, or forty. This this job description does not go to ours yet because that'll be the last thing that you do. So if we keep going through revisions and start taking things out and do something different with tasks, then the job duties go down, the hours go down, or it could go the other way if you start adding a whole bunch more hours. Because right now we're down, we're below thirty hours a week, you know, for what after you took away these two, so I think I'll be on. 20 hours or 24 you know we talked about 24 as being average yeah when we went to the contracted service so that's i think last week was 19 or something i, I try to keep susan involved with what the hours were for hyde park about 19 100 just under 20. the where you go next is some big bigger questions uh, historically we've had the road commissioner question come up and go down and up and down uh, that is in this new strike version as uh, struck from the town administrator job, which was in 2016, and put on the road foreman. So that's a that is a big discussion. That is sort of a, an, an option. The other option is sort of what you have now, which is have somebody outside be road commissioner. That's not highway or town administrator. Uh, in reality, the town road the road commissioner job duties if you look at it in statute, are spread out by three people. 
So that's how we op that's how we're operating now. A lot of towns don't have uh, many administrative staff. They have a town clerk. They have a road commissioner that does all of the statutory duties of the select board. Grade decide when to grade roads is on that list of job duties, which Mark French does. But a road commissioner could take that job and be delegated to make decisions on when roads get graded. So the find the where you are in Hyde Park. Mark French makes a lot of day-to-day -day decisions that in statute are select board duties or the road commissioner duties. So the clarity of, you know, people throw that word around way too loosely. You're the road commissioner. Well, the road commissioner has to have a job description too. And it's whatever the select board says. You want that person. It could be limited to one thing. Road commissioner shall put up the winter sand every year and that's the whole job of the direct the road crew to make that one job happen. Or it could be order roads graded, you know, plow the roads this way, um, manage your capital purchasing, you know, do all the grants, you know, all those things that select board kind of has a lot of say on. Um, uh, deal with complaints, you know, all, all those things that sometimes the select board takes, or I'll take, you know, I'll take a complaint. Mark will take a complaint. He prefers to get him first, you know, all that kind of stuff. So you, you, you need to have that discussion of road commissioner. If you're going to have a title, which statute sort of indicates you either have an elected or appointed road commissioner. But the job duties that person does need to be clarified and whether or not anybody else keeps some of those job duties. Uh, for example, issuing 1111 permits has been delegated to the town administrator now. Should the road foreman be doing that whole thing? Or should a road commissioner <laughs> hanging out over here be in charge of that? Or should the select board be doing that? You know, we're, we're in that mode of having these discussions. But at the end of this, I want to be pretty clear that everybody sort of knows what their lane is <clears throat> because that's the best way to have people perform better, I guess. And, I don't think a road commissioner has to work full 40 hours a week. <laughs> Yeah. Some are volunteer. Some just you know watch over the roads and help the road crew plan their day. You know that they, they don't get paid at all. The road commission is really a job duty discussion, not a position. We have positions. You have a town administrator. You have a road foreman. You'll have a select board. You're not going to ask the zoning person to do road stuff. You're not going to ask Jen to do road stuff. But those three people share it. Share it now. That's what I'm saying. It's think of it as job duties and where you want to put. That statutory responsibility to have somebody road commissioner, you know, Jeff Beatty called today. You're the road commissioner. I got a road complaint. You know that because they want to come. That's a complaint avenue to get something fixed. That's right. one thing. Uh, primarily, and I know this from my grandfather over in over in Pizza. When that road was bumpy, he's on the phone to the road commissioner because he, he he's going to come up with his grader in a day when I start harassing him. So that's how he, that's how people kind of relate to the road commissioner. <laughs> Because I need something done at my property that may be totally out of whack with the road network maintenance plan. But for them, it's important. So they need it resolved. <laughs> and do you order that private work attention over the public work schedule? It, it, it seems to me in reality. Um, that Mark really does find me when you look at all the day to day management, you know, Mark. Is the road commissioner doing that? And when there are complaints, it's like really that's who, that's who's going to deal with it. And it's been, I think, I think in sort of in reality, in the way it is now, what Ron does, and I think I want to see one in talking with staff, it's just real clear. I mean, my sentence is that is that a town administrator needs to have good financial background and financial management and deal with budgets. I mean, that's that's just the uh, <clears throat> you know, Jen is terrific, but she's, you know, she's still learning budgets and doing that sort of stuff. And that really is. So with, so with the road, sort of the ordering and all that kind of stuff that, that the town administrator does, I see those are the, those are definitely administrative duties as opposed to actually working the roads duties and coming up with, with what you do. I don't, I don't, I don't think that I think it becomes less and less realistic to think that a select board member is going to be a road commissioner. 
you know, if you're fortunate to have a couple of people that are very familiar with roads, they might do that and can take on a part-time job for nothing. <clears throat> but I think I think that possibility gets less and less as we go on, folks coming on the on the select boards. So I think it's it's really in some ways the split that we have now is is it's sort of that way, you know. <clears throat> I think the split causes issues. You've got people calling Matt, you've got people calling Rule, you've got people calling you, you've got people calling Mark, and then everyone's telling that person different things, and then people come in and complain, and then it's a shit show. So I feel like it needs to be one person. <laughs> right? No, I, I don't feel like it should be seven. I think what it has to be is everybody tells them to come to a select board. No, they go to the road form. We're not my, we're not here to micromanage the curve. We've no, been saying that so, everybody gets. Uh, no, I don't agree with that. I well, on an appeal for sure. Absolutely. If there's absolutely. if there's no resolution, they should come here. That's not right. not on a not on an issue that Mark hasn't heard about. Right, exactly. <laughs> they yeah. hit my mailbox. Right. Oh, <laughs> right. 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 Or or whoever your your vote for this. <clears throat> but at the same time. How are the cops? Correct. And, and is it going to take away from his managing on the curve? Right. But how, how are our neighboring towns structured? It's like, so does Johnson have a road commissioner? They have, more they have a public works. I haven't heard road commissioner. Yeah. Like the road foreman, public works person. They may have a road commissioner. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't heard one. Just Jason. There's a lot of. There's a lot of rules and regulations the road commission. No, I, I was gonna say I think that, that does change changes the actions, but I don't know how that this is all good stuff for us to discuss in the future. What 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 I mean this is no different than what we talked about a couple weeks ago with with Mark as far as starting to look at a priority list or I mean I, I'm not saying we need to micromanage them at all, but we definitely do better start looking at. Winners like uh, the last meeting, I asked like, if you go up over to Cantry Hill, is there nothing to stitch there at all? And if that stays that way for the winter, are we, we right. are we getting ourselves into a bigger problem by not looking at contracting some of that stuff or not contracting? I don't know what the answer is. You know, I'm, I'm new to this, but you know, I, I, We've never given ones. We, we never right? have, no, we have, so it's we, time to maybe get. I, I don't even know about yeah, or, or it can work back at it. Yeah, list, or, but you, but where like, where is priority? What right. is? Well, I mean, I don't know what it is. You don't know what it is. Who does know what it is? So yeah, that's something that more Ron and Mark have worked on, I guess, or you know. But we, we have kind of, to, well, there's there's a <clears throat> we just talk, Mark and I were just talking about this the other day with the first with the fifth person. Which allows him to right. sort of almost keep two crews going a little bit better than with just before. But he was with me this morning for the morning visiting these sites and trying to figure out should a contractor do that or whatever. So we were spending time thinking about those things. And he was still able to have two people on two different site, you know, tasks while he was out, you know, driving the roads and not doing, you know, do, do dirt work. But I think he feels, speaking for him, he's not here, but he is always asked, as far as I know, to want to deal with the people that have an issue directly, quickly, as soon as possible, because it saves him time down the road trying to figure out who said what to when and what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. Yeah. So I think that's that is a road commissioner directed thing that it goes to the road commissioner slash road foreman if you want to double title that on appeal if people are unhappy or speed is too slow right then it would add back up to the public comment period you guys deal with it like you've done a couple times this year right so i don't you know i think there's that kind of tweak i guess is it is part of that comes off town administrator job description that would stay on the town administrator would be the 1111 permit approval maybe because that's administrative thing that deals with upstairs zoning fees collected people that right. really is more administrative, administrative 
And Mark has an application. He has to go run out and look at a site. He, that's one very specific task. The rest of it is handled by the town administrator. So that would stay under T, the TA, whereas initial complaints and resolutions are clearly identified as road commissioner duties. And then you just keep going down that list. Some things administrator would say, like grants. We, we manage grants in two ways. We either hire LCPC to work with Mark, because that's all the grants have been. They used to do that for free. Now they have to go through a special agreement to get their services, just the way they do the funding of the state. Or the town administrator processes the grants and works with Mark on projects. So again, that's nothing that a, a road commissioner on a small town with one grant a year could probably get up to speed and handle that kind of paperwork. In Hyde Park, where we've decided to use grants at a higher level, you get five or six things. There's no way a working road foreman basically is going to manage the five or six grants. So you don't want to give that to the road commissioner road foreman. So you do, I, we complete that list and eventually use. And then you, the right, and then you as a board would look at that list and say, uh, we really want that one to stay with the select board. Yeah. Like, like the appeal of a complaint. We don't want Mark to say, I'm the end of the line, which we heard from Draper or whoever right. was testifying. We want Draper or any other complaint to know that there's an appeal process to report. Right. So, but that's not really clear right now. A lot of times the commissioner will be the final say, like you were saying, they have been granted the ability to have the final say. And it's almost like a legal appeal to go against the town at that point if they don't agree with the road commission. I think it's better to have the one step appeal, well, at least. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Well, they, 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 one thing about it yeah. if they have complaints and you tell them to go to the site board, 90% of them don't get to the site board, they forget about it. <laughs> yeah, I that's know. a good point. <laughs> 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 it's going to be early, right? I'm um, bummed here. Right? Well, that's true. You know, Mark and, and Kevin, so this with, with any road foreman, there are lots of day to day complaints people are upset and talking when they deal with it. We never hear it. Uh, right. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. And I've, I've been under the rule if I get one. I try to make sure that everyone's aware of it. That's yeah. I yeah. To, here you go. Yeah. This is what I got. Yeah. It's like on Saturday. We were right. So yeah. It's, it's kind of nice having that stepping process too. Like waiting to the assessors. The assessors go out, we put out the values. If they don't like that, if it's a grievance process, they go to the listers, they don't like that, then they go to the BCA. Right. So then be like vote foreman, vote commissioner, and select board if you want to have that type of. Yeah. Or, or yeah. if you had a separate vote commissioner person. I don't, I don't think we're doing it. Not that way. Well, yeah, there's people. I mean, I mean, to me, at, at our side, we just put another layer in there, but it's like, let's really get these people. <laughs> Again, I think I mean we right. we sort of have it. What we just need to go through is and make a clear list of the duties. All then, complaints go to Mark. If not resolved, come here. Yeah, they come here. So and the big you right. know, the, the grant is going to again. Some of this when you look at it, that I've been going through, and I've had a couple of conversations with Mark about it as well. You know that things just clearly are administrative. That that goes to the town administrator. I mean, the, the position is called administrator, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, and again, and I think, and, and because we want that person to have a, you know, a financial background and a budget background, a lot of the stuff that's administrative that comes down from, you know, from the highway are going to be with when you actually get to the purchasing of things and managing grants and doing that sort of stuff. And that really is all more, that's the nitty gritty financial as opposed to, you know, being able to ballpark, here's what it's going to take, or how many hours this project can take, or that kind of thing. Because, <clears throat> like, what happened through the flood, for instance, like what you and Mark did, that was the town administrator and well, uh, okay, no, okay. Con commissioner. Yeah, I'll well, continue. The select board and the road foreman were the primary people in the field to try to do assessments and okay. relay information and yeah. go see things, right? Mark was always, always collecting data through that. And he had his auxiliary helper right. because we identified that was a good need for collecting detailed information. 
Yeah. Mark would often finish the day and go back and say, that truck was here, that truck was there, you know, and they try to put it together at night. So the GPS versus auxiliary person that comes in on a, that was a big, I think Mark said that is what we really need is somebody that can take a lot of different details and capture that, yeah. that I'm going to forget or just not have time to focus on while I'm trying to put a road closure sign. Yeah, yeah. You just said that came about, it was interesting, <clears throat> Friday when my part got hit, and of course Mark was, they were off and Ryan was up in Newport, and I was driving home from Stowe, and I knew Wednesday we lost roads, and I, I knew Friday they were off. I texted Mark and I said, call me immediately. And he did, you know, and he and his wife were out someplace driving. I said, if you lost roads Wednesday, we're going to move the whole thing in town. I, 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 I texted him the same thing. I said, oh, it looked at it, it's not really at all, right? Exactly. I said, well, that's probably what, <laughs> what happened? So his wife stayed with him. So when he came, he got, because he got in the truck and everything, she stayed at the office. So when he was, you know, I called everybody out. She they just started anytime you know, there's going places, they just called her and she wrote it down. Oh, there you are. Yeah. And, yeah. It, and it was like at the end of the day, instead of Mark and the guys trying to remember what they had, trying to put a piece of paper, they it's like presto, they had a sheet. And Mark he says, I got a great idea <laughs> <laughs> because he was already here for the GPS thing, it's not working. And his wife and a couple of other people were if we said it and I talked with yeah. with Ron about it, said, you know, you come up with sort of standardized form. Here it's simple. Three or four of us would volunteer for the training that would take a half an hour and when you have an event, somebody sits up there on the radio and bingo, it's all done. At the end of the day, and, and the guys and Mark, everybody isn't trying to remember all that stuff. You just call it in and, and it's done. And it um it worked really well. So we would technology <laughs> go back to old school and then work with radio and pay it. Well, the other it's not a huge real benefit to having that, but <clears throat> road foreman, Roland probably included, are really responsible for capturing the data. You're not going to have a whole road crew right. you know, worried about that stuff. So a lot of the towns where you rely on the foreman. To either do the report after, do the daily report. I don't know how you guys did it in Morristown, but there's paperwork that has to be generated. And if you have that helper for that event in the heat of the battle kind of thing, the the stress load, I guess, of trying to right. it goes down. So there's a little bit of a benefit on that side of things for anybody that's trying to keep track of that. You can might have a really good memory, could sit down at the end of the day and, and capture it. That's another option. Probably a lot of road foremen actually do that, but they're but they're being put in that position because they don't have that other avenue, which might be less. Much it's not a it's not a tipper of a scale, but that is a benefit to the to the event. You know how you feel during the event. Yeah. So that's we just had a sheet. That's what we had for every trauma. Every loads went to one place. Everybody kept track of their loads, and then they handed it to me that night. Yeah. And then I took it up to the office yeah. and they documented it down. Oh, it's just a standard sheet of like okay. so where, where your load went, how many loads you had in this 22 spot. That's where you're supposed to number your yeah, sites. Yeah, you number the sites. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that uh, guy from FEMA wanted to help me to do that. And it works. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kind of because happen. the trouble is with the digging road, you could have four different sites on that road. It's a digging road. You've got to take each one by a site. Yeah. Okay. How deep the hole is, how long it is. Where are the, oh, like yeah. each wash out would be these like Where's all the big damage? Yeah, the big damage is usually dealt with a little separate. Yeah. Those, those all work on. Um, those would spin off into their own project. During Irene, I had 18 trucks on. Would you even give them to like your subs and stuff to fill out? Like if you uh, if you hired a truck and oh, yeah. say here fill this out for me, yeah. I had, couldn't get in the pit because that was all washed. The world was five feet of water. <laughs> it's right. <ready. laughs> so I had trucks hauling down to the shop. They they would get a paper from me. Yeah. How many loads they had, where they hauled from, where they hauled to. 
I weren't finding me. I mean, we had I had 18 trucks by one time. So look at yeah, that. Those, those are the I, method I, method in the fact right where <laughs> okay. 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 This and look at it and see what your thoughts are. And again, this is sort of been whittled down from talking with the, you know, with the with the staff. I know I had because I'm in the library a lot. Amy's just like, you know. So they just need to be as helpful as Ron. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Sure. Yeah, you're in there. Yeah, we have to put it in hand because it's, it's with the library and somebody's face or they might come and be and look at you again. Last people. Right. right. Yeah, the, um, yeah. All right, so I, I think that's a meeting to meeting thing. So if you all can look at that strike and mark it up or not mark it up, but we'll add it on the next agenda. And then we can decide uh, highway and library input. Yeah. Somehow. Minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of seven eleven and seven eighteen. I'll second it. I need to abstain from the eleventh. The eleventh, right? Okay. All right. So we're doing. This. <laughs> uh, can we do a second? Yeah, we do. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the old 7 11 23. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. All right. Aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? I'm abstaining. Okay. And then I'll make a motion for the 7 18 23 minutes. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. All right. Do you want to do the um, warrants motion and then just like they're all this was fine. Yeah, that was still fine. Mm -hmm. They're all looking at the room. Fine. Now we'll make a motion to go into executive session, including Ron and Justin. Hey, good. Hi. <laughs> Music to my ears. <laughs> I see one question on the Bruin grant, which is uh, about an over expenditure. So uh, she wants you to start thinking about how to cover the over. A lot of that's for legal fees that were surprised in the sense of uh, the easement drafting <laughs> that wasn't really part of the original budget. The original budget was mostly about the windows, but the easement took a long time to get through. Yeah. 
So I don't, she didn't say her timeline on that, but just something. Just to be aware. Well, you can show a deficit in that, but it'd be better to have a appropriation from somewhere to knock it out, whether it's from ARPA or some other line item. We're gonna think about that. Can't wait to look through all that. You know, it's all printed for me. Yeah. <laughs> not gonna read it. <laughs> <laughs> The big easement. Uh, that's, I think that was all. I want to make sure you guys were on that. I did have a handout on the meeting from Friday. We applied for clean water money to help uh, with a study of the dam up that you all bought on the quarter acre up Centerville, uh, the former cloud property. Yeah. So I testified on Friday, and they, a group of Northern Vermont water quality specialists that look at all the applications and they have to have a vote to move forward on the application or award the money. So Hyde Park was awarded 45000 for that study, which will basically hire a dam specialist, which is recommended by for a hazard dam assessment which gets incorporated into options for what to do with that based on all the fish and the beaver and the wetlands and the phosphorus loading and all those other things that the state of Vermont wants to spend money on. Eventually, we'll, they'll have a report and recommendation to back to you. Okay. So that's what's going on with that. That's good. That's I am. That's me. That's Yeah, that's new. Part of your stuff. I want a motion to approve the warrants. We need to read it all right. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody say? Okay. Okay, thank you. Is that everything? What's the church? Is that this weekend? Oh, yeah. Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. Okay. Do you want to meet up after? Just so I can. Yeah. yeah. What is the church? What is the church? Oh, right. Um, the, the church is just having a meeting. You're not buying folks to come participate as we will get going, as we're going for a, our minister is left and we're going for a new minister and we're thinking about. We want to go three quarters or full time, or whatever we're doing. We're just inviting community members to come have a conversation with us about what they would like to see a church in the community. Okay. Did not request anything. Yes, the, <laughs> the 30th at nine. Yeah. So, in our church service, we're going to have a, we're going to have a conversation. Then we're going to give people breakfast after. Yeah, they're doing now. Right? <laughs> doing a community breakfast Saturday morning from seven thirty to nine to raise money for the community fund. Yeah. Oh, okay. We we didn't we didn't do a follow up on the same cell follow up either. Did we need to? I was wondering why that was wrong. I reviewed the last minutes and it said the select board will discuss. Draper's issues with Mark. So I don't know if that ever happened directly with Mark, but that was what was in your last minute. Did we ever hear anything more from him or any more on that? No, I think he was happy with what you said, which was we'll talk to Mark about it. Mark so flooded, so they aren't that part of town anymore. Yep. And Mark hasn't been up to look at the to look at the site. He said we just we don't really do anything. And so probably he said it was uh, to, yeah, and but that you know, when they go over there, you know, if they end up back over and they're in a heat and they first will be looking at the service. That's what Draper and what the driver said was happening there. That's what they took the story. So I'm like, just love that. Let's look at it. He said, if it's okay, next time we're going up there, we'll, we'll drop them up. So he hasn't called you again. Uh, well, wrong. No. <laughs> or <Horrible. laughs> 
No. Okay. Yeah, that's. Right. I think okay. he was happy with the board. The okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. So I'll just put um, Susan Bartlett stated and Mark Fringe will look at the Draper site next time they're in the area and they're currently not working out there. Yeah. Yeah. Not for a future agenda. Yeah. Not for a future agenda. Yeah. Future agenda. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, we're done with that. Cool. Okay, we good? Ready to go? Yeah. Okay,